In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the center of mass as it relates to a typical calculus course. But before we get into integration, let's start with the basics. You need to understand the concept of a moment. A moment is basically mass times the distance from the axis of rotation. So let's use a seesaw for an example. And here's the fulcrum. Let's place an 8 kilogram mass on the right side and a 10 kilogram mass on the left side. Now let's say the 10 kilogram mass it's 5 meters away from the fulcrum. And let's say the 8 kilogram mass is 4 meters away. Now granted my drawing is not fit to scale but focus on the concept of the lesson. So what is the moment of the 8 kilogram mass? The 8 kilogram mass is 4 meters away from the fulcrum. So the moment is going to be mass times distance, 8 times 4, so it's 32 kilograms times meters. Now for the second object, the moment is going to be 10 times 5, which is 50 kilograms times meters. Now, just by intuition alone, you know that this side is heavy. So the seesaw is going to rotate in this manner, that is, in a counterclockwise direction. And we can see why. The left side has a greater moment than the right side, so the seesaw is not balanced. But using these two masses, how can we balance the seesaw? Where can we put the fulcrum? such that the seesaw will be balanced without moving the two blocks. If you place the fulcrum at the center of mass, the seesaw will be balanced. So how can we find the location of the center of mass of the system? Let's assume that the fulcrum is placed at the origin where x is equal to 0. Where should we put this fulcrum so that the seesaw will be balanced? To find the location of the center of mass, you need to take the moment about the origin and divide it by the mass of the system. The moment about the origin, it's going to be the moment of each mass. And this is the total mass, by the way. So the moment, let's call this m1 and m2. The moment for mass 1 is going to be m1 times x1, and the moment for mass 2 is m2 times x2. Now for the total mass is going to be m1 plus m2. Now it's important to understand that since we define this to be 0, this moment is going to be negative because it's to the left of the fulcrum and this one is going to be positive because it's to the right of the fulcrum. So the total moment about the origin is going to be negative 50 plus 32 which is negative 18. But let's use this formula. So m1 is 8, x1 is 4. It's positive 4 because it's on the right side of the fulcrum. m2 is 10, x2 is negative 5 because if this is the origin then this has to be negative values on the left. And then divided by the total mass, m1 is 8, m2 is 10. So 8 times 4 is 32, and 10 times negative 5 is negative 50, and 8 plus 10 is 18. So 32 minus 50 is negative 18, divided by 18, so that's negative 1. So the center of mass along the x-axis is at this position here, where x is equal to negative 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the fulcrum 1 meter to the left. So that means that the 10 kilogram mass will now be 4 meters away from the fulcrum. It was 5, but we're going to decrease that by 1. Now, the 8 kilogram mass, it was 4 meters away from the fulcrum, but now it's going to be 5 meters away from the fulcrum. So let's redraw the picture.
So this is now 5 meters, and this is now 4 meters. So if we calculate the moment for mass 1, it's going to be 8 times 5. And this is going to be the new origin, so x is 0. 8 times 5 is 40. And then for m2, it's going to be 10 times 4. But this is really negative 4 if you, if you incorporate the signs. But notice that the magnitude of the moments are the same. The absolute value of both moments is 40, and so the seesaw will be balanced because the fulcrum is now located at the center of mass. So hopefully this example gave you a good idea of the concept between the center of mass and the moment of an object. So keep this in mind, the moment of an object is simply the mass times the distance from the axis of rotation. And the center of mass along the x-axis is going to be the moment of each particle or object divided by the total mass. Now, if you have three objects, you can continue this equation. Now, if you need to find the y-coordinate for a two-dimensional system, this is how you can find the center of mass. The equation is very similar. Now let's work on some practice problems. Find the center of mass of the point masses on the x-axis. So let's begin with a picture. So let's say this is the center. And at position 5, we have the 10 kilogram mass. Now the second mass is at position negative 8, and that's the 20 kilogram mass. And the third mass is at position 10, and that's the 40 kilogram mass. Now where do you think the center of mass is going to be located? The center of mass is going to be somewhere in this region. It's going to be closer to the most massive object, which is on the right side. So we have more mass on the right side than the left side. So the center of mass should be somewhere in this region. Less than 10, but greater than 0. So now let's go ahead and calculate the exact position of the center of mass. So let's use this formula. It's going to be the total moment about the origin divided by the total mass of the system. So it's the moment for mass 1, that's m1x1, plus the moment for mass 2, plus the moment for mass 3, divided by the total mass of the system. So m1, this is m1, this is m2, and this is m3. So M1 is 10, and it's at position 5. M2 is 20, and it's at position negative 8. M3 is 40, and X3 is positive 10. And then the total mass is going to be 10 plus 20 plus 40. So 10 times 5 is 50. 20 times negative 8 is negative 160. 40 times 10 is 400. 10 plus 20 plus 40, that's 70. So 50 minus 160 plus 400, that's going to be 290. And then the units is going to be kilograms times meters. And then we're going to divide it by 70 kilograms. So the unit kilograms will cancel. So 290 divided by 70. As a decimal, it's 4.14 which is around this position. So it's on the right side because there's more mass on the right side. Now, before we move on to the next example, there's some things I want to go over in regards to 
the moment of a particle. So let's say we have a particle and we wish to determine the moment of the particle about the x-axis. So here's the x-axis. The moment of the particle about the x-axis, which is free to rotate, it's going to be the mass of the particle times the displacement of the particle from the x-axis. So the particle is y units away from the x-axis. So it's going to be m times y. Now what about the moment about the y-axis? So let's say that the y-axis is free to rotate. Well, the moment of the particle about the y-axis is going to be the mass times the displacement of the particle from the y-axis, which is x. So make sure you understand that concept. If you need to find a moment about the x-axis compared to with the moment about the y-axis. The x-coordinate of the center of mass, it's going to be the moment about the y-axis divided by the whole mass of the system. And the moment about the y-axis is the mass times the displacement from the y-axis, which is x. And that's for one particle. If we have another particle, it's going to be m2, x2, and so forth. And the center of mass, the y-coordinate of the center of mass, is going to be the moment of the whole system about the x-axis divided by the total mass. And so that's going to be m1, y1, plus m2, y2, over m1 plus m2. And if there's a third particle, it's going to be m3, y3, plus m3, and so forth. So that can continue indefinitely. Let's work on this problem. Find the center of mass of the system with point masses m1 and m2 located at 1, 5 and 4, 2. So let's begin by drawing a picture. So the first mass is located at 1, 5. So this is the 8 kilogram block or point mass. Now the second object is located at 4, 2. And that's the 12 kilogram mass. So how can we determine the center of mass? Well, let's calculate the x coordinate first. So it's going to be m1 x1 plus m2 x2 divided by the total mass, m1 plus m2. So m1 is 8, x1 is 1. m2 is 12, and x2 is 4, divided by 8 plus 12. So this is going to be 8, 12 times 4 is 48, 8 plus 12 is 20. So it's 56 divided by 20. So the x-coordinate, as a decimal, is 2.8. Now, before we find the y-coordinate, I want to make a small correction. This should be x-bar instead of x1. Now, to find the y-coordinate of the center of mass, y-bar is going to be m1, y1, plus m2, y2, divided by the total mass, m1 plus m2. So m1 is still 8 kilograms, y1 is 5, m2 is 12, y2 is 2, divided by 8 plus 12. So 8 times 5 is 40, 12 times 2 is 24, 8 plus 12 is 20. So this is going to be 64 over 20, which as a decimal is 3.2. So this is the location of the center of mass. So that should be somewhere in this vicinity. But it's going to be a little bit closer to the 12 kilogram mass than the 8 kilogram mass. 
So far, we've considered how to find the center of mass of a system of point masses in one dimension and in two dimensions. But how can we do so if we have a mass that's distributed over an area? So let's draw a picture. So let's say this is f of x and the bottom curve is g of x. And so we have this surface, and let's say with uniform density, how can we find the location of the center of mass in this region? Well, let's talk about density first. There's different forms of density indicated by the symbol rho. Now, density for three-dimensional objects is mass per unit volume. This is the most common form that you've dealt with. Now, for one-dimensional objects, like a line, we're dealing with a linear density, which is mass per unit length. Now, what about for two-dimensional objects, which we have here in the case of a surface? This is going to be surface density, which is mass per unit area. And so that's what we're going to be dealing with in this problem. So the mass of this region is going to be the surface density times the area. Now, what is the area of that region. You know that the area is the definite integral from a to b of f of x, the top function, minus the bottom function g of x dx. So this is a and this is b. So since the mass is the surface density times the area, we can also say that the mass is going to be the surface density times the definite integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx. Now the moment of an object about the x-axis, earlier we said it's the mass times the displacement of that mass from the x-axis, which is y. So let's say if we have some point of interest and to find the moment of that point about the x-axis, we need the displacement of that point from the x-axis, which is going to be y. So we have m in this expression, but what expression can we use for y? We could say for, let's say, a very small region, the y-coordinate of this point, let's say if that's the center of mass, it's going to be the average of these two y-values if that rectangle is very, very small. So we can say that y is going to be f of x plus g of x divided by 2. And this is y at a specific point. So combine in these two expressions and this equation as well. We could say that the moment about the x-axis it's going to be the surface density times the definite integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x and then times this expression if we replace y sub i with that. So that's going to be times f of x plus g of x divided by 2 times dx. So notice that we can FOIL f minus g times f plus g. So if we do that, then the moment about the x-axis is going to be the surface density times the definite integral from a to b. Now we have a 2 in the bottom, so I'm going to put that as 1 half. And then f times f is f squared. f times g and negative g times f, they will cancel. And then negative g times g, that's going to be negative g squared. Now, to find the y-coordinate of the center of mass, recall that it's the moment about the x-axis divided by the mass. So the moment about the x-axis is basically this entire expression.
And earlier we said that the mass is the surface density times the area. So we could cancel rho in that expression. So this equation you want to save when solving problems. The y coordinate of the center of mass is going to be 1 over a, because a is in the bottom, times the definite integral from a to b, 1 half f of x squared minus g of x squared times dx. So that's how you can find the y coordinate of the center of mass for a two dimensional region where the mass is distributed evenly in that region. And keep in mind, a is the area of that region. So a is the definite integral from a to b, f of x minus g of x. Now, let's derive the formula for the x-coordinate of the center of mass. So let's start with the moment about the y-axis, which is going to be the mass times the displacement of that mass from the y-axis. So if we draw a picture, let's say this is f of x, g of x, and let's focus on that point. So about the y-axis, the displacement is going to be x. Now we know that m is going to be the surface density times the definite integral from a to b, f of x minus g of x. And then we're going to multiply that by x, which I'm just going to move it to that side. So the moment about the y-axis, we could say it's the density times the definite integral from a to b, x times f of x minus g of x dx. Now the x-coordinate of the center of mass is going to be the moment about the y-axis divided by the mass. And recall that the mass is the surface density times the area. So we can cancel rho, and then this is going to give us the final equation that we need. So the x-coordinate is going to be 1 over a times the definite integral from a to b of x times f of x minus g of x. So this is the second formula that you want to use. Now let's work on an example problem. So let's say we want to find the centroid bounded by the regions y equals the square root of x and y equals x. How can we do so? Well, the first thing we need to do is draw a graph. And so the square root of x looks like this. And then y equals x is just a straight line. So this is the shader region bounded by the two curves. So the top part is f. And f is the square root of x. The bottom part of the curve is g of x. Now we need to find the points of intersection. So clearly you can see that the first point is going to be 0. But to find the points of intersection, you need to set the two functions equal to each other. So if we square both sides, we can see that x is equal to x squared. Subtracting both sides by x, we have x squared minus x is 0. Now factor out the GCF, which is x. So the points of intersection are 0 and 1. So that's a and b. Now the next thing we need to do is find the area of the shader region. So it's going to be the definite integral from a to b, in this case from 0 to 1, the top function f of x, which is the square root of x, minus the bottom function g of x, and that's x dx. This is the same as x to the 1 half. So the antiderivative of x to the 1 half is going to be x to the 3 over 2 
And instead of dividing it by 3 over 2, it's going to be multiplied by 2 thirds. And the antiderivative of x is x squared over 2, evaluated from 1 to 0. So if we plug in 1, it's just going to be 2 over 3 minus 1 over 2. And then if we plug in 0, the whole thing is 0. So we need to get common denominators. Let's multiply this fraction by 2 over 2 and the second one by 3 over 3. So this is going to be 4 over 6 minus 3 over 6, which is 1 over 6. So the area of the shader region is 1 over 6. So we're going to use that later. So now let's find the x-coordinate of the center of mass. So the x-coordinate, it's going to be 1 over a times the definite integral from a to b, x, f of x minus g of x, dx. So a is 1 divided by 6. a is 0, b is 1, because those are the points of intersection. And then f of x, the top function, was the square root of x, or x to the 1 half. And g of x was simply x. Now, 1 divided by 1 over 6, if you multiply the top and the bottom by 6, 6 times 1 over 6 is 1, so you just get 6. Let's distribute x to everything we see here. So 1 plus 1 half, that's 3 over 2. And then x times negative x is negative x squared. The antiderivative of x to the 3 halves is going to be x, 3 over 2 plus 1, that's 5 over 2, and then times 2 fifths. And the antiderivative of x squared is going to be x cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to 1. So let's plug in 1 first. So it's going to be 2 over 5 minus 1 third. And then if we plug in 0, it's just going to be 0. So we need to get common denominators. So let's multiply 2 over 5 by 3 over 3 and 1 third by 5 over 5. So this is going to be 6 over 15 minus 5 over 15. 6 minus 5 is 1. And so we have 6 over 15. 6 is the same as 3 times 2. 15 is 3 times 5. So we could cancel a 3, and this will give us 2 over 5. And so that is the x-coordinate of the center of mass. So now we need to find the y-coordinate. So let's write the formula first. The y-coordinate is going to be 1 over a times the definite integral from a to b, 1 half f of x squared minus g of x squared dx. So this is going to be 1 divided by 1 over 6, definite integral from 0 to 1, and f is the square root of x, and g is simply x. And so this is going to be 1 over 1 over 6 is 6. Then I'm going to move the 1 half to the front. So times a half. The square root of x squared is just x. And then we have minus x squared. And so half of 6 is 3. And the antiderivative of x, that's going to be x squared over 2. And for x squared, it's going to be x cubed over 3. Evaluated from 1 to 0. So if we plug in 1, it's going to be 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3, and then minus 0. So once again, we need to get common denominators. So let's multiply 1 half by 3 over 3, 
and one third by two over two. So this is going to be three over six minus two over six, which is one over six. And six is basically three times two. And three divided by three is one. So this gives us a half. So these are the coordinates of the centroid, or the location of the center of mass. 2 over 5, comma 1 over 2. That's the answer. Now let's try another practice problem. Identify the location of the centroid bounded by the regions y is equal to 4 minus x squared, and y is equal to x plus 2. So let's begin by graphing the function. So x squared is a parabola that opens upward. And negative x squared is a parabola that opens in the negative y direction, that is, downward. And then it's shifted up four units. So this graph is going to start at positive four, and it's going to go in this direction. Now let's graph this function, x plus two. This graph is going to look like this. The y-intercept is 2, and it has a slope of 1. So 2 units to the left is going to be at the x-axis. So if you want to find the y-intercept, you can set y equal to 0. And you can see x is negative 2. And to find the y-intercepts for this one, if you set y equal to 0, and then if you factor the expression, it's going to be 2 plus x and 2 minus x. So the x-intercepts for the red line is going to be 2 and negative 2. And this is 4. So we have the first point of intersection. That's at x equals negative 2. We need to find the other one. So let's set these two equal to each other. So 4 minus x squared is equal to x plus 2. And let's move everything from the left side to the right side. So this is going to be positive x squared plus x. And then 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Now to factor this expression, we need two numbers that multiply to negative 2, but add up to positive 1. And so it's going to be x plus 2 and x minus 1, because 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, 2 plus negative 1 is positive 1. So the points of intersection are x equals negative 2 and x equal 1. So now we could find the area of the shader region. So it's going to be the definite integral from negative 2 to 1. f of x, so f is the top function, which is represented by the red line. So that's 4 minus x squared. And then minus g of x, which is the blue line, that's x plus 2 dx. So first, let's combine like terms. So we have negative x squared minus x, and then 4 minus 2, which is 2. So now let's find the antiderivative. So it's going to be negative x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2 plus 2x evaluated from negative 2 to 1. So let's plug in 1 first. It's going to be negative one-third minus one-half plus two. And then if we plug in negative two, negative two to the third power is negative eight times the negative sign, so that's positive eight. And then two squared is four. And then two times negative two, that's a negative four. So we have negative one-third minus 8 over 3, and then minus 1 half, and this is going to be plus 
4 over 2 plus 2 and plus 4. So negative 1 minus 8, that's negative 9. And negative 1 half plus 4 over 2, that's positive 3 over 2. And 2 plus 4 is 6. Negative 9 over 3 is negative 3. And plus 6, that's going to be positive 3. So 3 is the same as 6 over 2. So 6 over 2 plus 3 over 2 is 9 over 2. So that is the area. The area of the region is 9 over 2 square units. So now let's determine the location of the x-coordinate of the centroid. So let's determine the value of the x-coordinate. So let's start with the appropriate formula, which is going to be 1 over a definite integral from a to b x times f of x minus g of x dx. So a is 9 over 2. That's the area. Lowercase a, we set it to negative 2. b is 1. And f of x is 4 minus x squared. g of x is x plus 2. One over nine over two, that's gonna be the reciprocal of that, so that's two over nine. Now before we had negative x squared minus x, and then four minus two, we said it was two. Now let's distribute the x. So what we now have is negative x cubed minus x squared plus two x. Antiderivative of negative x cubed is negative x to the fourth over four. And then we're going to have minus x cubed over three. And for two x, it's going to be two x squared over two, or simply x squared. Now let's plug in one. So it's going to be negative one over four minus one over three plus one squared, which is one. And then let's plug in negative two. So negative two to the fourth, that's 16. But we have a negative sign in front. So it's negative 16 over 4. And then negative 2 to the third power is negative 8 times another negative. That's going to be positive 8. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. And so negative 16 over 4, that's negative 4, plus 4. That adds up to 0. Now for this, let's get common denominators. So let's multiply negative 1 fourth by 3 over 3. So that's going to be negative 3 over 12. And this one, let's multiply by 4 over 4. So it's going to be negative 4 over 12. And 1 is basically 12 over 12. Here we have minus 8 over 3, but we're going to multiply it by 4 over 4. So it's going to be negative 32 over 12. So negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7, plus 12, that's 5. And then 5 minus 32 that's negative 27. Now, negative 27 is negative 3 times 9. 12 is 4 times 3. And 4, we could break it into 2 times 2. So we can cancel a 9. We can cancel a 3. And we can cancel a 2. So this gives us the answer, negative 1 over 2. So that is the value of the x-coordinate of the centroid. Now we need to find the y-coordinate. So let's use this formula. It's going to be 1 over a times the definite integral from a to b, 1 half f of x squared minus g of x squared. So a is 9 over 2, and the definite integral from a to b, so it's a negative 2 to 1, and then f of x, that's 4 minus x squared, squared, minus g of x, which is x plus 2, squared, 
and then dx. So we know 1 over 9 over 2 is going to be 2 over 9. Now we need to FOIL this expression. 4 minus x squared times 4 minus x squared. That's going to be 16 minus 4x squared and another 4x squared, so that's 8x squared. And negative x squared times negative x squared, that's positive x to the fourth. And then this is going to be x squared, 2x and 2x, that's 4x. 2 times 2 is 4. So if we distribute the negative sign, it's going to be negative x squared minus 4x minus 4. So combining like terms, we're going to have x to the fourth and then minus 9x squared, minus 4x, and then 16 minus 4 is 12. So now let's find the antiderivative. It's going to be x to the fifth over 5, minus 9x cubed over 3, which is 3x cubed, 4x squared over 2 is 2x squared, and then plus 12x, evaluated from negative 2 to 1. So if we plug in 1 first, it's going to be 1 over 5, minus 3 minus 2 plus 12. And then if we plug in negative 2, this is going to be negative 32 over 5, minus 3 times negative 8. So that's plus 24. And then negative 2 squared, which is 4 times negative 2. That's negative 8. 12 times negative 2 is negative 24. So we could cancel 24 and negative 24. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5 plus 12. That's going to be 7. And then we have negative, negative 32 over 5, so that's positive 32 over 5, and then positive 8. So 1 over 5 plus 32 over 5, that's going to be 33 over 5. And then 7 plus 8 is 15. So I'm going to multiply 15 by 5 over 5. 15 times 5 is 75. And 75 plus 33, that's going to be 108. And then 108 divided by 9 is 12. So it's 2 times 12 over 5, which is 24 over 5. And I know I'm missing something. And that is the 1 half. I'm missing 1 half in this expression. So it's supposed to be half of 24 over 25, I mean 24 over 5, which is 12 over 5. So this is the answer.